We're just in this crazy water environment. With everybody I spoke to, the first time you mentioned the word pirates, yeah. it's like, like a boom exploded, really, like as if everybody on yeah. the whole island heard it. Right. So what's going Piracy? No, we don't have that. Don't yeah. talk about it. Lower your voice. When I talk about the word pirates, people usually think Captain Hook, Peter Pan, Johnny Depp, Captain Morgan's rum, lame eye patches, little kid fantasy stuff. But most people aren't thinking or looking in the right places. Like the Straits of Malacca, a narrow strip of water slicing through Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. The bridge between the west and the east for maritime trade. This is where the world's oceans become choke points and millions of dollars in cargo pass through daily where poor, money-hungry, seafaring people can stealthily make their way in and out of trouble. Somalia, Malaysia, Indonesia, piracy is happening. From small-time boat thugs to crime syndicates taking down million-dollar tankers. It's real, worldwide, and wreaking havoc on global trade. I first found out about pirates when I was in the military, training the Singaporean armed forces in counter-piracy. In the last couple of years, things have only heated up. So I decided to pack my bags and set off on a journey to the other side of the world, to the Moroccan Straits, piracy's birthplace and current hotspot, to see if I could get up close and personal with modern day piracy. The following is my journey. I guess London's a bit of an odd place to start a pirate journey, but that was my first stop. London obviously hasn't had a serious piracy threat for hundreds of years, but it's still a maritime trading epicenter and happens to be home to the international organization which monitors piracy, the IMB, or International Maritime Bureau, headed by Mr. P. Mukadon. Mr. Mukadon's like the godfather of the anti-piracy movement, essentially chiefing our planet's waters, keeping tabs on everything from his office on the Thames River. Muku agreed to talk with me and give me the rundown on what, who, and where piracy is. Since 2003, the attacks of piracy have been coming down steadily. In 2007, we had the first upturn. Uh, attacks increased to 263 attacks a year. And all the waterways in the world are very important. The Malacca Straits is very important. So can you tell us about how the response to piracy works? Well, we monitor piracy wherever it occurs in the world. We receive reports of the attacks immediately it is passed on to the nearest law enforcement agency for action. In Southeast Asia, for example, who, who is a pirate? They are um, um, mariners who have turned bad. They know how to handle weapons and terrorize the crew members into doing what they want them to do. It's unreal that in the year 2008, there are people taking down ships like this. If you know how the shipping uh, business operates, it's, it's not, not difficult to imagine how they get away with it. Muku was a great start to my journey, not only breaking down the modern piracy world, but also setting me up with his colleague in Malaysia who runs counter piracy in Kuala Lumpur. Next stop, KL, baby. If, we're, if we make our flight. Oh yeah. A maze of last minute travels took us from London and the hell of Heathrow to Bangkok. Bangkok. And finally to Malaysia. Waking up in Kuala Lumpur didn't feel very piratey, but it felt good to be in Asia, on the other side of the world and inching closer to the Malacca Straits in Indonesia, the heart of modern piracy. Kuala Lumpur is where the Piracy Reporting Center is, and where we we're hoping to get a closer look at how the problem is being handled. It's a big, fast city, the fastest growing city in Asia, bustling with business and trade. With such a close proximity to the Malaccan Straits, Malaysians are exactly the kind of people who want to make sure it's safe and that the investment money keeps coming. So thanks to Muku, I was able to get access to the Piracy Reporting Center, the mothership of the anti-piracy movement, where counter-strikes, negotiations, and secret informants make up a lot of the dirty work done to keep the world's waters safe. Here I met with the head of the agency, who due to the dangerous nature of his work had to be kept nameless, faceless, and off camera. This is the Piracy Reporting Center, and it's like the 911 for piracy. If there's a pirate attack anywhere in the world, they call here first then the information is disseminated to governments and navies and police forces. This is a tracking system for all the ships, so if a ship's hijacked, they can keep a location on it. First call, it's not 
the Navy or the police. It's the International Piracy Center. One of the duties here is intelligence collection. And that's where you see all these photographs coming from. Ships that have been taken by pirates. All this is stuff that has been captured. This is a crew that was captured, mostly Indonesian sailors. I mean, look at these photographs right here. These are the faces of modern piracy. This is a message Piracy Reporting Center just put out. Pirates hijacked these two fishing vessels. The vessels were taken to an Indonesian island and all crew were forced to jump overboard. The whereabouts of the two fishing vessels are still unknown. That's two weeks ago. This is a picture where the Indian Navy is actually firing on a cargo ship that was stolen by pirates. Look at this shot right here. There's a shot of the pirates themselves getting away. So the little legend for this map is that they use uh, skull and crossbone pirate heads with eye patch to represent pirate attacks. And as you can see, there's a huge pirate head right here where we're going. All right, the Malacca Straits, Indonesia. These are hotbeds of maritime piracy. Agent X sent us on our way with a number of phone contacts, which we put to use right away. Though spending all day in our hotel room getting denied quickly became frustrating. I'm chasing a ghost, I'm telling you, man. This, this is what you get when you hunt pirates. Empty line. Nearly every government agency and patrol turned us down. With three days to kill before we could depart for Indonesia, and on the verge of going insane from failed phone call attempts and bureaucratic bullshit, we decided to see Malaysia. My director Josh and I went to Sunway Lagoon, a giant theme park in the Malaysian jungle, given an upside down bungee ride and allowed to surf Asia's only wave park by ourselves. The waves sucked, but it was fun. At night, we tried our hand at urban pirate hunting, slash drinking, if you will. We warmed it up on the Malaysian streets. The first bar we hit, Josh was pulled up on stage by the local cover band and forced to sing. The next bar, randomly, our bartender was dressed as a pirate and stuck a dead ringer for Johnny Depp. He agreed to take several shots with me, and that's when I knew our trip was going to be good. The pirates would come if we let them. No more bureaucratic crap. We're going to get to the bottom of this pirate shit on our own. When the Thai Navy found these guys, they found all 13 crew members tied up, living on bread and water that the pirates had left them. Piracy is happening and wreaking havoc on global trade. So I decided to pack my bags and set off on a journey to the other side of the world. Fired up from our run-in with the Malaysian Johnny Depp bartender, we started moving towards Indonesia and its pirate atolls. But a pirate-sized hangover and the anarchy of Asian air travel would prove to be legitimate obstacles. When, you know, when in pirate land, do as the pirates do, drink a lot of rum. What are you saying, you're hungover right now? If by hungover you mean in character, yes. We heard last week the Indonesian police just captured a crew of eight pirates on this little small island called Batam. It's apparently a pirate's den. We're going to roll there, see if we can uh, go find some pirates ourselves. Going by boat to Batam took us right through the Malacca Straits and allowed us to explore the one thin slice of water that connects the whole world. For hundreds of years, the Straits have been a strategic center as seaborne goods flowed from east to west. In modern times, the Straits serve the same purpose. Today, almost 70,000 merchant vessels transit through the Straits of Malacca. Over a fifth of the world's goods moved by sea, and over a third of the world's crude oil transits the Straits annually. But this strategic choke point is still plagued by pirates. In 2005, the mega insurance company Lloyd's of London classified the Malacca Straits as a war zone, creating two major ripple effects. First, international governments in the area raced to clean up their act and the piracy numbers have theoretically dropped. But this also deterred ship owners from reporting piracy. So piracy has become vastly underreported and despite the 237 official reported attacks, the real extent of the piracy problem is unknown. So we just woke up in our hotel room looking out over the city of Batam and things are different now. This story is about to 
change. This isn't sterile Kuala Lumpur or, or Singapore. This is a third world country. Batam is sketchy and kind of dangerous, but that's exactly where the pirates hang. They're down there somewhere. We're gonna very gently, because everybody keeps telling us how dangerous this place is, uh, ask around and see if we can find any pirates out there. Located right off the straits, only miles from the big trade lines of Singapore, Batam's essentially a pirate Disneyland, where shady types coming off a heist, like say a pirate, can escape, lay low, and spend money on brothels, gambling dens, and nightclubs with little worry about police presence. Without a guide and translator, there wasn't much we could do. Then we caught a huge break. We were put in touch with one of the most well-connected guys on the island. I want to introduce you guys to, uh, to our new friend. Uh, we call him Johnny Batam. He's going to be uh, rolling around with us, showing us the ropes. So tell me about pirates. Pirates came to, but came to here for the happy time. When they're here yes. and they spend their money, what, what are they doing? It's go. Girls. Yes. They get ladies. And then ecstasy. Ecstasy? Yes. Drugs. Right. A drug? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have to go to the Blakang Padang Island. It's very famous. It's fire location. It's not not too difficult to find find them, right. but we must do slow. No guarantee, yeah. but we move slowly. Yeah, Why? we move too slow because, because it's dangerous. It's, uh, yeah, it's dangerous. Um, oh, that's comforting. Thankfully, Johnny was plugged into Batam. Before we went to his famed pirate island, he wanted to hit the streets, taking us downtown to where the unemployed fishermen hang out and wait for the jobs to come in. These are the types of guys who have to deal with pirates and also sometimes get recruited for their heist. Perfect types for us to do some networking with. Do they want some coffee or anything? Uh, uh, yeah, maybe they like drink beer. <laughs> oh, get beer. You guys want beer? Everybody here is a seaman. Mostly the captain, engineer, uh, mechanic. And right now, is there um, work or no, no one's jobless. working? Jobless. Jobless. Does that mean that people will come like recruit. If you're asking that question, I cannot answer because I'm not the uh, member of the pirate. I got one of friend. Yeah. In the street. Malaka street. In Malaka street. And what happened? He just tied did, he tell up, you, did he tell you yeah, the story? Just tied up, punch, get a hand spoon, get the money, everything. Yeah. He's not here. He's not here. Can we call him? After some negotiating with the sailors, they gave me the phone number to their friend who had recently been robbed by pirates. We gave him a call, and a few hours later he agreed to talk over some afternoon beers in our hotel room. What a legend. The self-proclaimed Indonesian Chuck Norris look-alike. Played down the fact that before he became a sailor, he might have done some pirating himself. He sported a commando shirt and a tattoo with a pirate skull and crossbones, and the word mount, which means death in Indonesia. Does it get any more pirate than that? His English wasn't so great, so he did some drawings to help out his story. We're gonna call our, our new buddy Chuck Norris, because he looks like Chuck Norris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what he, yeah, yeah. That's what he wants to be called for the purposes of this interview, and uh, he's got a hell of a story. Like, listen to this. Chuck, can you tell us what happened? I am seaman, eh? You're a seaman? Yes, I am seaman. You, he was on a tanker ship? Yes, tanker ship. He was on watch from 12 yeah, to 6. Yeah, yeah, I duty. Yeah. Duty, yeah. Duty. Uh, duty. Duty. I see the fishing boat in my ship. The small boat, the turn around, very close, uh, the tinker, uh, and then help the problem tinker. Yes, uh, yeah. they hopped up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sudah so semua, enam orang pakai oh. gun. Suddenly, six people. Suddenly, uh, the six people bring gun. M16. 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 Jadi pas itu bang, kami semua angkat tangan. Big tanker coming. Big tanker. Big tanker coming. Cannot, cannot move from cannot. behind, nah, okay. because they have gun. Nah. The pirates controlled another tanker ship, probably stolen, and he was the one who was responsible for pumping. The pirates at gunpoint yeah. told him to pump the oil from his ship to their, to the pirate ship, right? So these guys are basically stealing 200,000 tons of crude oil. How much money is Maybe that Maybe a million. Mil million. Over a million dollars. Million. All the pirates left. Uh, so and they left you tied up. Uh, yeah, the for three days. Tied, three two days. days. When the Thai Navy found these guys, they found um, all 13 crew members, including the captain, um, tied up, living on bread and water that the pirates had left them. Right. Well, um, how come Chuck Norris didn't kick their ass? Oh, okay, cannot. <laughs> they, have guns. Yeah, okay. they have guns. He just said that the best thing to do is not to fight back. The Indonesians, like, they know not to fight back, but there was a Korean captain who did, and, like, you saw what happened to him, is what he said. What happened to him? He was executed. He's still worried about pirates to this day. 
It's pretty insane. I don't want to be too dramatic, but like the guy driving the boat, we're just going to call him the captain, okay? Because he doesn't want his name used. And he is basically handing us the keys to the pirate kingdom. Going to Batam, the pirate hangout. The real extent of the piracy problem is unknown. Without a guide and translator, there wasn't much we could do. Then we met Johnny Batam. With our days in Batam running out, Johnny took us back to the Malacca Straits one last time. Finally, he had gotten the tip we were looking for, a pirate type willing to take us to Blakan Patan and the infamous pirate islands we were hearing all about. We just arrived at one of the little harbor places and we're uh, renting a little skiff. We're jumping on a boat to go to this other island, which is apparently a jumping off place for some of the pirate attacks. Let's go for a ride. Whoa. Our first stop was Turtok Caban, a small fishing village where we were told we could meet our pirate guide. As it turns out, Johnny had indeed pulled off the unimaginable. He found us a true modern day Indonesian pirate. Our captain was involved in small time piracy heists for which he had done time in prison. He had also spent years shuttling between the small islands and pirate hangouts around Batam. Not only had Johnny found us a pirate, he agreed to be our guide through the pirate underworld. I'm not sure I really broke down what's going on right now for you, but it's pretty insane. I don't want to be too dramatic, but like the guy driving the boat, we're just going to call him the captain, okay? Because he doesn't want his name used. And he is basically handing us the keys to the pirate kingdom. He's telling us all about the operations, where they're planned, where the hangouts are. Uh, it's pretty heavy right now, and we're just in this crazy water environment where we keep pulling up to these shacks in the middle of the ocean. Let me show you the Indonesian Navy. Doing their best. What the captain's doing right now is he's showing us how they come up on a ship when they're, when they're going after it, okay? He's driving up in the wake of the ship so the crew can't see him, and then they scurry up and take the ship down. America people. America people, yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're that stoked that we're shooting. Yeah, right I now. do not. Maybe we should not point the camera at that dude. They do not seem happy. You want to go upstairs? Sure. Yeah. We want to go upstairs, huh? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Finally, we had arrived at Blakam Padang, the island we'd been looking for. Despite some hesitation, Johnny was able to make friends and introduce us to the few pirates who happened to be laying low there. This was their headquarters, their party spot, and their planning center. And we were in. Party here, stand by here, for drinking course, and then make strategy. It's a good part to have a look this there. Is the situation right. good or not? Right. It's good, we go. We can go walk around yeah. and look. What, what should we look for? What's good? What should we see? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drinking. <laughs> Have you seen Pirates of the Caribbean? Uh, where they go to that floating island and everybody's like drinking and there's like, prostitutes everywhere. Like, dude, this is the real life version. We're on a floating island of sticks and karaoke bars. Karaoke bars, by the way, being a euphemism for brothels. And uh, they're everywhere. And I am really, really stoked to have Johnny with us because he is our guide dog and our lifeline as we're floating in the middle of nowhere. Let's get out. Like, I don't want to be so in the open. Let's, let's, go, let's go a little further in. Let's move. Yeah, yeah, people, people are giving us hard stares. So let's, let's, go, let's go in. 
you want a drink? Yeah. yeah, we can get a drink. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so we decided to just go into one of the shacks and get a drink. This is where you would chill during the day, plan your operation, wait for your target opportunity. That's that's what they've been telling us. I feel like I'm about to crash through the floor here. What were you saying that she said? Uh, Mama say the last time is very very famous this uh, this place, but uh, starting the maybe six months ago, the Indonesian Navy is a respond is uh, the issue every time is uh, patrolling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the pirates cannot stop because the pirates uh, is life hit from the pirates. Yeah. We need food, we need life, we have children, we have wife. I cannot stop because the. The reason is the period of economy. Economy? Yes, economy. So you think it won't stop? Cannot stop. 100% cannot stop. <laughs> Tells you everything you need to know. Fortuna. Fortune. From, from this spot, this is where they, uh, they make their fortune and they spend their fortune. These chicks are talking about us. I keep hearing the word bule, which means like white one. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm more scared of the pirates or the prostitutes. <laughs> Let's get out of this place, huh? Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye, you guys. All right. Some of the nicest pirates ever. <laughs> These guys are super cool, actually. <laughs> There's all these different layers uh, to this. I mean, God, you just don't know who's out here. Like, look, look at these guys jamming along in a boat. That, that's all it takes is, is four dudes you know, in a little boat with an outboard motor and some machine guns to take down one of these multi-million dollar container ships. It's almost Robin Hood, but the foot soldiers, the workers, right? They're these guys, poor, Indonesian fishermen, right, or out of work mariners who get recruited to do these piracy jobs. And you can see it, they live on the water, they know these areas, these inlets are their home, and uh, hence they become the springboard for, for piracy. We sped across the water on the final leg of this surreal journey for one last stop. The last island the captain took us to was his own, one we simply called Goat Island. All right, here we go. Goat Island was a remote seaweed farming atoll where many of the villagers had never even seen a Westerner. It's from islands just like this that pirates are recruited. That said, the people there were some of the sweetest we met. It was the perfect place to see the root conditions which breed piracy. How, how, how big is this island? How many people? Around 100 over. 100 people? Yeah, 100 people stay here. 100 people live on this island. And about 300 cumping goats. <laughs> All right, so look. This is, uh. <laughs> you gotta kinda understand uh, where we are. We're on this, this little island called Palau Sarang. Right across the way there, you can see Singapore. You can see like the outline of the skyscrapers in the distance, really close in terms of geography, a million miles away in terms of lifestyle, culture affluence, right? And these are the conditions that breed piracy. So uh, from places like this little island that those guys are coming from. See, there's a whole nother level that I can't penetrate. Frankly, like law enforcement agencies can't penetrate either. And that's the gangs that organize these guys. And that's, that's where the real money is made. These guys are just trying to feed their kids, feed their groms. As I left Indonesia, the riddle which is modern piracy was still swirling in my head. The international trade circles and big time crime syndicates, the small time fishermen turned new recruit and the recruits children. Mostly I was left with memories of the people and the sea they've inhabited for thousands of years. Like Johnny said, as long as big trade boats run through these seas and their hungry mouths to be fed, piracy cannot be stopped. 
So we're left with this ancient maritime tradition, which will continue to haunt our oceans long into the foreseeable future. See more Vanguard Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on Current or online at current.com slash Vanguard.